Hey, what's up, Livecast people? It's a Friday. It's a couple days before Hanukkah starts. Very important holiday. And it's a few weeks before Christmas starts. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you what I think would be some great food-centric gifts for the holidays, give you a few ideas. You like that idea? Love it. I got everything lined up here. We'll start down here. So we've talked about sous vide before. And sous vide is the method of cooking mostly protein, chicken, steak, beef, fish in a constant temperature water bath. It guarantees, guarantees perfect meat. You want 132 degree steak. Max will put a picture up of when we did it once before. You vacuum seal it or you put it in a Ziploc bag. You put it in 132 degree water in an hour and a half, two hours, three hours later, it comes out perfect. You sear it and you cut it open and it's unbelievable. There's different types of sous, uh, sous vide machines made these days. This is called sous vide supreme. It's larger. It's like a big bread machine. You lift it up, you fill it with water, you set the temperature here and away you go. Then there's this stick type. Um, this is a made by a company called Sancerre. It's got like a big uh, roach clip. I mean like a big hair clip <laughs> on the back. <laughs> it plugs in and then you put this into any vessel that will be big enough to hold whatever is you're going to need. It's a big pot. Right. Fill it up with water. You turn the temperature to whatever you want and away you go and you're done. It is really great for cooking. Uh, this guy is probably... 350, 400 bucks. This guy and his friends are anywhere between 150 and 200 dollars. I think this one was 199 dollars. I use sous vide all the time. If you're going to get sous vide, or for somebody that already has it, a torch is its next best friend because searing the meat, the fish, the chicken, whatever, when you're done, is a very important step. This is a big ass one. This is made by a company called Searsall. You turn it on, you buy the head from these guys. Just the head. This part, this torch, and the canister, you buy on your own at a hardware store. But the beautiful part about this is you push the button, and it's like a jet engine. It gets super hot. When I haven't had a toaster, I've used this instead. So this head is about 65 bucks. I mean, maybe on sale now, the holidays, but who knows. They say the beauty of this because of this mesh and because of the way they've built it is it guarantees no torch taste. That being said, probably the most popular type of torch used in restaurants is this type, one of these types. And this just fits on a can of propane, sits on the top, you turn it on, and there's your flame, right? It's very nice, you make it a little bit smaller if you want. Uh, you can sear scallops with this, you can do anything with this. I make this, uh, if you watched the recent live cast, no? Did we do those sh shrimp on the live cast? The cooking guy that airs this Sunday uh, here in San Diego has me doing this uh, Japanese mayonnaise basted grilled shrimp with togarashi. Anyway, you torch at the end, it's ridiculous. Okay, sous vide. Torches, they kind of go hand in hand. Next is a good thermometer. And a thermometer is very important for all kinds of cooking. You don't have to take a chance at knowing when your meat is ready. If you're not going to use sous vide, you can do this push test. But, you know, a filet pushes differently when it's about medium rare than a New York steak does. It takes a bit to get used to that. The way around that is a good instant read thermometer. And there's all types that you can get. Uh, they all take maybe 10 to 12 seconds to read. This guy is made by a company called Thermapen. It's probably 80 bucks, but it reads in literally three seconds, which three seconds to like 10 or 12 seconds doesn't seem like a big deal. But if you're cooking a chicken or a turkey or something in the oven, when you open up that oven and you leave the door open for an extra 10 seconds, now you're letting a lot of heat out and it takes a while to recover and that kind of stuff. So a good thermometer, is always important and a good instant read one. I'm gonna put links for all this stuff up on the website so you don't have to write anything down. Now, for those people that are avid like uh, barbecuers, and I don't mean grilling, I mean like cooking briskets and slow smoking and stuff like that, this kind is very good. 
This goes into the brisket like this. This sits on the outside of the smoker or the egg or whatever it is you're using. You dial the temperature that you want and it tells you what the temperature is as it's climbing and when it's ready, it beeps. And of course they make wireless versions these days. You can carry it around in your pocket, go anywhere in the house and it does its thing beautifully. Uh, and it's obviously not just for outside. You could poke this into a chicken or a roast beef in your oven. This wire is built to go inside a hot oven and then come out and it won't melt or anything like that. Good? Good. <clears throat> Tongs. I say this all the time. Those bent pieces of metal are useless pieces of crap. They're no good. Good spring-loaded tongs are very important. You should be able to pick up something as little and delicate as a quarter or something like a salami with these things. And these things are super strong. These ones are made by Mesermeister. Really, really good. You can't go wrong with any of these. All right. While we're talking about that, we can talk about knives because everybody needs good knives. I say you look for... A, 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 a knife that has a full tang, and full tang means that the steel here goes all the way through to the handle, right there. That's going to give you one constant solid piece. It's going to be stronger. That's what these knives are. This edge is called a granton edge, those little divots. The concept is, is that when you cut, it releases the food and it doesn't stick. It's not going to really work great on cheese. But for all kinds of other things, they're good. I'll put a couple links to knives on the website. These again are Messermeister knives. Great quality, made in Germany, they're excellent. And look, that's a nine inch chef's knife. That's a big ass knife. If you know somebody that's smaller and has little hands, they're probably not gonna use a knife that size. Don't let a salesperson in the store talk you into a big knife like this for a gift for somebody who's not gonna use it. The knife you'll use all the time is the one that fits comfortably in your hand. Cool? Cool. All right, moving on. Go to the front, Max. This is really important. Now we're getting into a little bit of food. I love giving food gifts. I love giving curated food gifts, and that means a collection of things. And I always think Asian ingredients make a really, really great gift. So I have some of my favorites here. Chili black bean sauce, sambal, uh, which is the chili sauce, which is like sriracha. In fact, these guys are made by the same company. But this one is smooth, and this one you can see has seeds in it. That's the difference. The sambal is a little uh, spicier, still beautiful taste like the sriracha. Make an excellent gift. This is, uh, this is sesame oil, chili sesame oil. You can get plain sesame oil. Um, a hoisin sauce, it's kind of like a Chinese barbecue sauce. Really, really good. This is QP mayo. You know I use it all the time. If you're a mayo fan, then you should get yourself some QP mayo. You can go to an Asian market to get it. You can also get it online from Amazon. It's probably like three bucks in an Asian market, maybe five bucks on Amazon, but buy enough and they'll send it for free. Okay, olive oil and good balsamic vinegar are very important and they can be expensive. A good bottle of olive oil, good bottle of extra virgin olive oil can be upwards of $20-$25. Maybe not everybody wants to buy it for themselves, but I say if you're going to somebody's house for a party, rather than taking a bottle of wine, get a good bottle of olive oil, stick it in the bag, and take it with a good baguette. That's a gift that somebody will use all the time. You show up at the front door, you won't be there with five other guests, everybody with a bottle of wine. You'll be the one bringing something unique. Okay, my walk. Um, if my house caught on fire, I would grab, in this order, the people, my pets, my laptop, and then probably my walk. So carbon steel, flat bottom walk. You don't need a round walk. Don't let somebody tell you have to have a round walk. I make all kinds of stuff in this one. And look it, it served me really well. It started off silver inside. Wait, my computer's gonna drop. Why you gotta do that? Because it there. was just there out of the way. So don't let somebody tell you you have to have a round bottom walk. A round bottom walk means that you have to have one of those special rings on your stove. If you don't have a special ring, the thing's going to move around a lot. This started off silver. It got black over time. This is what you want. It's kind of like cast iron in that once it gets this color, it's seasoned and things don't stick to it anymore. It's really, really great.
This thing at Bed Bath & Beyond I think is $18 or $19. Pans are really expensive. This is not. And on my website is a direction for how to season a carbon steel flat bottom wok the first couple times so you start off right. You just don't want to throw food in right away when it's silver or you won't be doing the right thing. You got to spend a, about a half an hour. No big deal. Some oil, get it hot, let it cool. Oil, get it hot, let it cool. That kind of thing, right? And while we're talking about cast iron, let me just pull out one of my grandmother's cast iron pans. This thing is as old as the hills. I can't do the math. She's probably been dead for 25 years. She had this until she was about 80 and she had it since she was about 20. I can't do that math, but just say that this is old. And cast iron pans, again, are those things that are not expensive, but they're really good. If I cook something sous vide, my preferred way to sear it when it comes out is I throw this on the heat, get it smoking hot, and then the steak will go in about 30 seconds aside and take it out. The other great thing about this is they look so good, they go from the stove to the table when you're serving things. A macaroni and cheese or scalloped potatoes or something in this thing, unbelievable. That's that, okay. Hey, so we want you to love uh, Perch, sponsor of the show like we love them. Check them out on perch.com. I hesitate to call them a kitchen bath store because they are so way beyond any kitchen bath store you've ever seen. You won't believe it. You got a bunch of locations around the country. Check them out. You'll love them like we love them. They're the best. You've seen me wear these t-shirts. I love food centric t-shirts. Most of the t-shirts that I wear are from a company called Bad Pickle Tees. It's a San Diego company. And here's the ones they make, right? Ramen Life. I'm all that and dim sum. My favorite animal is steak. I've got a lard on for you. Lard on, little pieces of bacon. Get it? I lard on, oh, whatever. I heart pork and this one. Whiskey? Why the hell not? Anyway, food lovers love t-shirts like this. Check them out, links on my website. And I would be remiss in covering holiday gifts if I didn't bring up the collection of Sam the Cooking Guy cookbooks you can get on my website. You want my signature in them, you can have them that way. If you want them plain, you can have them that way too. <sighs> All right. Oh, just back to the food thing. I gave a couple gifts for people last year from out of town. I gave all San Diego made um, condiments. There's jams and jellies and sauces and blah, blah, blah. I gave a box of about 20 of them. Specialty Produce, a place that I like to go in downtown San Diego, has an amazing collection of local San Diego uh, foodstuffs. Beautiful thing, box up and send to your friends in the suckier parts of the country that don't have nice weather like we do. Right? What else am I missing? Catalina Offshore, go online to them, catalinaop.com. You can go on their website and you can send like Mexican wild shrimp to somebody back east or in the middle of the country that don't even know what water looks like. That don't, mm -hmm. is, that, is that proper English? Yes. That don't even know what water looks like. All right, I think we've covered a lot of stuff. There's a lot of information here. Don't be stuck, but don't wait. Start now. Have a great weekend. Have a great beginning of Hanukkah. And uh, we'll see you next week. Don't give shitty gifts. And don't eat shitty food. No excuse for either of those. See ya.